Psycho Culture's Anarchy with a movie review for you with the long-awaited Star Wars. Finally. Now, heads up, this is going to be a spoiler-heavy fucking video. As in, if you have not seen it, you've already had a week to see it, that's your own fault for watching this video. Spoiler alerts are coming. Now then, in three, two, one, let's begin. Now then, let's get it right off the bat. This movie is ten times better to a million times better than the fucking prequel trilogy. What this movie did is it returned Star Wars to form. I mean, without a doubt, let's, another thing we need to get off the chest like right away, this Star Wars is a retelling of Episode 4, A New Hope. There's no way to beat around the bush, but it, I, I like the fact that they at least acknowledge that when they're comparing the Death Star to Star Killer, the new Death Star of it. Han Solo's like, it's bigger! It's another Death Star! whoop de fucking do But let's just get down to the meat of it all. The characters are what really drive this movie. Oh my god. I had so much fun seeing Han, Chewie, and Leia back in action. Han Solo and Chewbacca are like an old married couple that are bigger all the time. Rey is a fantastic- she's the scene stealer of this entire movie, new character. Kylo Ren, another complicated, very, just very, almost tormented character. Like, he wants to be, he's just this Darth Vader fanatic. Finn, who's a runaway stormtrooper who goes against the First Order. And then there's Poe Dameron, who is the best pilot in the galaxy. And you see why in this one tracking shot, where he's taking down TIE Fighters left and right easily. And you really want to see more of him. So we start off by meeting the First Order and Poe Dameron. And right off the bat, it just, in the first 15 minutes, it establishes what kind of movie we're dealing with. Like, where we see that the First Order is just as bad, just as horrible as the Empire, which they religiously follow in, a, in some case or form. We see how the Force is utilized. We see that, that the galaxy is not what it's supposed to be. Luke Skywalker is missing. We have no idea where he is. We have no idea what's going on. And this is one of the biggest positives of this movie, without a doubt, is the fact that it introduces us, like, reintroduces us to this new fucking world, this new galaxy it, that has all our favorite characters, but a bunch of new ones where we will be able to follow for the next few years. And when it ended, I was like, oh my god, I want more. Now, the film is not without its flaws, but we'll, f for now, focus on the positives. So, right off the bat, Daisy Ridley's character, Rey. She is truly a fascinating character. You don't know her backstory, you don't know who she is, but she is very special. She's in tune with the Force. She, know, she knows how to do many great things. I'm just, that's one of the biggest um, theories is that she's Luke Skywalker's daughter. And a lot of people say, what if she's not? God, this is just, every scene she's in, she's probably the best character in that scene because she's, she's just trying to find her place in the galaxy. She's like, I gotta keep going back to my family, but she's a lot like Luke Skywalker in that regard. She's trying to find her place in the galaxy. She's trying to find her purpose, which is why it was really cool seeing her get the lightsaber that belonged to Luke and Anakin. Now, but moving on, we will also meet Finn. Finn is also a very interesting kind of, like, step back, as in it's like, oh, there are actually humans and normal people amongst the stormtroopers. And when he said, I was kidnapped from, my, from a family that I will never know, but I chose that I would not kill for them, it instantly shows that even though Finn was trained by the First Order, he's a good guy, he's a good man, he doesn't believe in it. And he is one of the funniest characters. He has so much funny shit to say, ranging <laughs> when he was asking Ray if he has a if he has if she has a girlfriend boyfriend back in Jakku, where he's all in Phasma's face, he's like, I'm in charge now. I'm in charge. It's just great. Poe Dameron is also a really cool new character. Like I said before, he's the greatest fighter pilot in the galaxy, and he's really witty. He's like a less damaged Han Solo. He's not jaded, he's not angry, he's straight- you know what, I'm gonna keep this on the entire time. Like, he's not angry at the galaxy, he has fun, he's like, I, uh, I'm, I'm the best of the best, and I really believe in what I'm fighting for. But, one of the- another great new character, without a doubt, is Kylo Ren. At first, you think he's just some badass, he's like, I'm the dark- the new Dark Lord of the Sith, 
I control anything and everything. But you learn that, da da da, spoiler alert, he's actually the son of Leia Skywalker and Han Solo, whose original name was Ben Solo. And oh my god, this character, he's, he's really fascinating to look at. He's actually a much more complicated character than Darth Vader was when he was first introduced in 1977. Because here he is, who was once a promising, maybe a promising Jedi of Luke Skywalker, but then he got seduced by the dark side, by Supreme Commander Snoke. It's just really interesting seeing him, how he talks to the burnt helmet of Darth Vader, saying how, teach me, show me the power of the dark side, I keep being tempted by the light. It's such a fascinating role reversal, where Anakin was constantly tempted by the dark side, Kylo Ren is constantly tempted by returning to the light. It shows that even though he's a Sith, he is actually remorseful. He regrets what he did. There's a part of him that's always constantly regretting what he's done. And while he acts as though he doesn't really care about Han Solo, and by the way, when we get to that Han Solo scene, the last one of the movie, the, oh god, that was such a, that was hard to watch. But it shows that this guy is complicated. He is very interested. Like, as in when things don't go away, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he's like, anything else? It shows that this guy also has some wit. He is the son of Han Solo. Now, aside from all the new characters, another great surprise is BB-8. BB-8, thank God, did his per did his or her purpose. He was he or she was funny. She, it was, she was he or she was useful and all that stuff. It was just great seeing BB-8 every time he interacted with the other characters, like with Finn with the lighter or whatever. It just it's <laughs> such a relief to see that this character was utilized properly. One character, however, that wasn't utilized properly was Captain Phasma. I mean, she looks cool, but she was. <sighs> She was used so poorly, like she was instantly tossed aside once Finn and Han and Chewie got her to lower the shield so the X-Wings could launch their assaults on the Star Killer or Death Star 3.0. Back into that. Now that Captain Phasma was that was that was without the, an underutilized character, but thankfully Brienne of Tarth, I forgot her full name, Johnson, I think, she's thankfully back in the next episode and hopefully she'll play a more substantial role and a better role than the one she was in this one. And another interesting character was, this guy must have taken fucking, like, so many history classes of dictators, uh, General Hux, because he did the most Hitler-esque frickin' speech, you remember that, guys? Like, where he's just like, And the resistance, nicht den Kaldischen, Kaldischen, It's like, okay, Hitler. But thankfully, there was also the returning characters, Han, Chewie, Leia, C-3PO, R2-D2, Luke Skywalker, they all came back and they all played their roles beautifully. It was great seeing Han Solo and Chewbacca, well mostly Han, be like this guiding force for Rey and Finn into this galaxy. He teaches them in a sense. It's almost like, like subtle teaches, where one of the best moments is when he tells Finn, he's like, listen, women always find out everything. Or when he gives Rey the gun, he's like, I know you can defend yourself. That's why I'm giving it to you. It's just such a, like, such a fascinating thing to see Han Solo go... It was great to see Han back. That was without a doubt one of the coolest things. And Harrison Ford, thankfully, played his role beautifully. He wasn't grumpy Harrison Ford. No, he was Han Solo. A different Han Solo, 30 years afterwards. And Leia, and one of the coolest parts was the relationship and the talks between Leia and Han. How they talk about how that they, in essence, were really upset that they felt like they failed their son. That, like, because of their son turning to the dark side, they went back to being what they were good at. Han went back to smuggling, and Leia went back to being... Wow, really? <laughs> Han went back to smuggling, and Leia went back to being a general. And, but they still love their son. They still want to see their son. And when C-3PO first saw Han, it was just, yeah, man. So, moving on with that, one of the best aspects of this movie was the practical effects. It was so awesome seeing these legitimate set pieces, as in these set pieces, what, hang on, mask is slipping, <laughs> slipping. Like, the set pieces were real, these were all practical effects, these things that you saw, they were legitimately there. I mean, the only CGI was probably, was the ships, sort of, and the TIE Fighter and X-Wing fights, and only two characters. 
Matsukanara or whatever her name was, and Snoke. You could tell these guys were so CGI. I mean, the motion capture was so and so, but uh, I don't know. They they were so out of place. It just kind of felt weird. That's a gripe. But moving on, we get to the finishing act, and this is where a lot of people say it's like Star Wars Episode Four. Why? Because we have to get into the Star Killer base, disable the shields, take down the Star, like shoot this exhaust port, and then the whole thing blows up. And you, and there was another moment, just like from Star Wars, where that, like this. All right, here we here we go. This is the scene that kind of just like was like, oh, really? They had to go there. Han Solo's death scene. Remember that, guys? God, that was so. Like, what did you guys think of that scene? Um, jaw drop, jaw dropping, and just like unexpected. Though. Well, yeah, but bit. but when you think about it, when when Han came up and he's just like Ben, I'm like, oh god, he's going to yeah. die. He's talking to him, he's just like, oh, I'm gonna be, don't, like, come on, he can maybe turn to yeah. the light where he's like, I'm willing to do anything for you, son. Yeah. And then he just stabs him, I'm just like, that sucks, but, uh, I, I should have seen that coming a mile yeah. away. But you do see that one moment where Han grazes Ben's cheek, and he's just like, you're still my son. But the real thing that really made it like, oh, he's dead, is Chewie's reaction. Chewie screamed in horror and rage. He's like, my best friend just died in front of me. Oh my god. And you just see Chewie get a nice shot right here. It was like, oh, he is angry. Mm -hmm. And then you see, like, Ray and Finn, they're trying to get out of there, but then they're cornered by Kylo Ren. And Kylo Ren, he's like, I'm ready to fuck you two up. And you see... Like, Finn and, Ky and Kylo Ren fight. And here's the thing, that, that fight is scrappy. They are punching and going at each other and all that other shit. Just, it is an awesome fight to see. And you see why his Excalibur hilt, whatever the uh, extensions are useful. Because when Finn and Kylo Ren are face to face, like, Kylo just like, uh, oh, right to the, right to his shoulder. And then Finn gets sliced in the spine. But then, this was, like, when I first saw it, everybody started clapping was when the lightsaber went from the ground into Rey's hand. But then after that, you see that Rey is still... She don't know what to do. She's running away from Kylo Ren half the time. And she is... Man, he's like, he's actually getting over hand. And when he is over her, he sees, says, like, you have the Force. You need a teacher. But then she's like, the Force? And she's been recently learning about this power through the movie, but, you know, it's a little too quick in my opinion, but, you know, movie can be. See, this is a movie thing, not a Star Wars thing. Where she's like, I just need to use the Force. And the reason why she overpowered Kylo Ren, in my opinion, is because for the longest time, Kylo Ren was the only Sith Lord, or, or lightsaber, or Force user, aside from Je Supreme Leader Snow. So when he meets another one who's actually very powerful with the Force, he's actually a, an overwhelmed. He's like, whoa, I haven't faced anybody this strong since maybe Luke Skywalker when he trained me. And then there was also the fact that Snoke said it's time to complete Kylo Ren's training. So neither Rey or Kylo Ren are at their peak. We have no idea how they're going to be when the time, you know, when they legitimately fight in their prime. Which is what I'm excited to see in the next one. So, this movie ends on such a cliffhanger, honestly. That's, which is why it's, that's, that's one of the best things to do. Hook, line, and sinker. See in two years. Because it ends with finally, we're wondering, where is Luke Skywalker? And just like Kylo Ren said when he was interrogating Rey, he sees it, the island in the ocean, and then she presents the lightsaber to him. And then it ends. I'm just like, no, oh, come on! Now, there's a lot of things to be said. Like, there's a lot of... This movie moves fast. I have to say it here now, like, the plot is quick, the characters and the scene... There's never a dull scene. There's a lot of scenes that remind me from Star Wars Episode Four, the cantina scene, the final assault of the Death Star scene, the death of a wise, like, elderly, like, leader of sorts. It's all, like, you could tell that Disney played it close to the chest when making this movie. They didn't want any fuck-ups, they just want to say, we'll introduce Star Wars in the new and old fashion that'll hook new fans and get old people back in the seats. And they did just that, and they did fantastically, which I will defend this movie to my grave. This is one of the best movies I've seen all year long in a long time, it was so good to see this movie succeed in all expectations, in my personal opinion. 
people are inclined to their own, but this is what this is by far the best Star Wars. I don't know if it's better than Empire Strikes Back or the first one. It's like all three of them are tied to me right now. But regardless, this movie does have its flaws. Again, uh, the death scene of Han Solo, it just felt really out of place. It was shocking and sad to see Han go, but it just it could have been handled better. Uh, plot convenience of how quickly how quickly some of the things moved along, how Rey got the hang of the force so quickly and all that shit. But other than that, this movie is overwhelmed by the best features of it. And because of that, I highly recommend this movie. 10 out of 10 of a 10 psychos out of 10 psychos and all that shit. Go see this movie. And ladies and gentlemen, may the force be with you all and see you in episode 8 of 2017.